Sessions, a single accident can change the world. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 accidental inventions. Kids love to squish it, and squash it, and roll it! For this list, we're looking at the products that resulted from moments in history when scientists inadvertently stumbled upon some pretty life-changing discoveries. Whether they stemmed from sticky stowaways in dog fur or from leaving their experiments out for too long, these accidental inventions revolutionized our lives. What is it? It's a microwave. It heats up everything. Pasta, lasagna, meatballs, wherever. It's really? science, yeah. It's, that's how it heats up the food. It's, it's scientific. Number 10, the X-ray. Hmm, if it isn't a piece of candy stuck in Junior's throat, X-ray gives the doctor the inside information. And now he can assure Mother that the candy will soon dissolve and Junior will be as good as ever. In 1895, German physicist Wilhelm Röntgen was doing his scientist thing when he happened upon a discovery that influenced how we treat anything ranging from cavities to broken bones to luggage. He was messing around with cathode rays, trying to prove whether or not they could pass through glass, when he noticed a glow on a screen nearby. That probably wouldn't have been strange had it been deliberate, but as an unintended consequence of his work, it was remarkable. And since he couldn't explain it, he nicknamed it X-radiation. More than a century later, X-ray technology can be used in cancer treatment and can ensure that you don't smuggle anything untoward onto a flight. So this is what Mrs. Brown saw. Inside information on Junior's pockets. Yes, X-ray is a wonderful invention. Number 9. Velcro. Ah! <laughs> the Velcro. I can't stand Velcro. That tearing sound. Pets make awesome companions, but sometimes they come in handy in the science world as well. While hanging outside with his dog, engineer Georges de Mestral noticed burrs sticking to his dog's fur and his own clothing. Upon inspection under a microscope, he found the seeds themselves were shaped like hooks, which allowed them to stick to animal fur or anything that mimicked a loop shape. Though no one was particularly interested in the idea at first, de Mestral built upon the concept of velour crochet or velvet hook, eventually leading to a patent and Velcro's use in spacesuits and annoying wallets. Sliding along. All four wheels are off the ground though. That's a lift. That is a lift. 90 strands of hook and loop fastener can lift the Peugeot 205 GTI. Number eight, stainless steel. It should be borne in mind that in this primitive process, the iron was not completely melted, as in the usual modern making of steel. Back when the world was still using steel that stained or rusted, one intrepid metallurgist shot to the forefront of the industry. There'd been a good 20 years of research into the idea of a steel alloy that didn't rust, but it wasn't until English metallurgist Harry Brearley was approached by an arms company to develop a specialized gun barrel that he accidentally cracked the stainless code. While working to develop a rust-free material for gun manufacturing, he ended up developing one that didn't corrode. This is called a blanking machine, and it's where the very first stainless steel knife, a bit like this one, was shaped here in Sheffield a hundred years ago. It's a discovery that made steel even more applicable to everyday uses. Men and steel provide a nation with its comforts, its luxuries, and its progress. Number seven, dynamite. Alfred Nobel, you know, the dude responsible for the Nobel Peace Prize, was also the guy behind the invention of dynamite. He was the mind behind blasting caps, used for safe detonation of nitroglycerin, but he was looking for a less deadly way to transport and utilize the volatile substance. Nitroglycerin is the most dangerous and unstable explosive known to man. One day, a crate containing nitroglycerin fell over and spilled into the substance used to encapsulate the jars, called Kielziger. But nothing exploded. Nobel recognized that the silica provided the much-needed stabilization, and the sand nitroglycerin paste mixture could then be safely transported and detonated reliably. All right, we're not going to take any more of this stuff than we need because nitroglycerin is extremely temperamental. So we just... Number 6. Teflon 
Teflon is the material for the imperial. My stripper, girl stripper, the henny sipper. Back in 1938, Roy Plunkett, a chemist working for DuPont, was trying to develop a new type of refrigerant when something curious happened. He and his assistant were working specifically with tetrafluoroethylene when they noticed that the interior of one of the steel cylinders in which they contained it had become covered in a waxy substance. Their further experiments with the material found that this polymerized perfluoroethylene was extremely slippery. In fact, it was one of the most slippery substances known to man. So, naturally, it was applied to frying pans. Number 5. The Microwave Oven 90% of homes in America have at least one. I'm talking about the microwave oven, a major time saver in many American kitchens. Back when the Allied forces were revving up for World War II, an American radar specialist was helping develop radar equipment for potential use in the conflict. In his lab one day, Percy Spencer was working with magnetrons when he noticed that the chocolate bar in his pocket had melted, and not from his body heat. Less than a minute with no shrinkage or shriveling, since there is no furnace-like blast of heat. This is cooking by microwave, cooking without heat. Connecting the dots back to the magnetrons he'd been handling, Spencer discovered that a radar set could be used to cook food like popcorn and eggs. And thus, decades later, Hot Pockets and Pizza Bagels got their day in the sun. Or just two minutes in the microwave. Makes a cook's life easy. Of course, good help is still hard to find. Number four, the implantable pacemaker. Uh, did they give you a pacemaker for this? They gave me a, a defibrillator, like a type of pacemaker. Yeah. And you, you keep that anywhere in your hat? Yeah. <laughs> while the idea that electrical impulses could help normalize heartbeats had been around for a while, you can thank Wilson Greatbatch for making it possible to see your grandparents for a few extra years. As an electrical engineer, Great Batch was working to develop an oscillator to record heartbeats when he put the wrong piece into his machine. When he turned it on, he noted that the pace it was keeping seemed to be in sync with a human heartbeat. After being shrunk down and protected from bodily fluids, the device became the first practical implantable pacemaker, almost entirely by chance. Back in the old days, the pacemaker was about the size of a box of cigarettes. Now they've kind of narrowed it down to, or improved the size down to about the size of an old uh, John Adams silver dollar. We've come a long way. Number three, plastic or Bakelite. The plastic is any substance which is capable of being molded. But to the chemist, for his modern plastics, it is actually more complicated. Right around the turn of the century, inventor and chemist Dr. Leo Bakeland was looking for a way to replace a product made from the excrement of the lac beetle, known more commonly as shellac, as it was being used for everything from wood varnish to gramophone records. Bakeland had already made his mark in photography with innovations in developing and printing. But according to his own words, he hoped to make money by discovering a shellac substitute. Instead, he stumbled upon an interesting formulation. His combination of phenol and formaldehyde produced a moldable, easily hardened material that may not have been shellac, but it ushered in an era of happy, shiny plastic stuff. And we're sure it made him plenty of cash. Number two, anesthesia. Every day, thousands have surgery requiring anesthesia. Anesthesia allows for safety and comfort during surgical procedures. Historically, cultures worldwide had been using some form of anesthetic for pain relief or recreation for millennia. But it wasn't until the 1800s that its use in medical procedures was formalized, with several men claiming ownership of the discovery. As the story goes, dentists Horace Wells and William T.G. Morton witnessed the effects of anesthetics at laughing parties, which were gatherings where people basically got high. Is this real life? Yeah, this is real life. Okay, now... Okay, now I... I have two fingers. Intrigued by its apparent pain-inhibiting properties, Wells used laughing gas, or nitrous oxide, for his own tooth extraction while Morton used ether in a procedure. Along with several other doctors, these men helped implement the widespread usage of anesthetics in medicine. <laughs> Before we discover our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Good morning, good morning to you. I'd be just a zippy if it wasn't Mississippi. Bread was like really sweet. Mm -hmm. 
and he realized that that was weird. So he put the bread down and wiped his uh, hands and his mouth and his beard with the napkin. He's like, the napkin's sweet, too. Yeah, he thought the napkin was super sweet. And he's like, okay, there's something weird going on. He put two and two together and realized it must have been that powder that he had on his hands from the, the chemical that he spilled on it. That he didn't think to wash off before he ate with his hands. Exactly. Yeah. And it turned out to be saccharin. Is that enough? It's crazy glue. Number one super glue out there. All right, good to go. In 1943, Hoffman became temporarily psychotic through accidental ingestion of the drug. The door swung wide open for research into the nature of the schizophrenic process and in the largest sense into the biochemistry of psychoses. Number one, penicillin. In modern medicine, few drugs are more important than penicillin and for doctors, running out is unthinkable. Sometimes good things come to those who are gross. In this case, those good things came in the form of a medical revolution sparked by a messy lab. After summer vacation, Scottish scientist Alexander Fleming returned to his laboratory at St. Mary's Hospital to a little surprise. He'd apparently left some of his petri dishes out, allowing mold to grow. Upon closer inspection, he noticed the mold was actually inhibiting the growth of the bacteria around it. In an era when a simple infection could mean rapid death, this was nothing short of a medical miracle. Several years later, the world's first antibiotics were put to use, saving lives around the globe. This turned into powder, penicillin ready to be used. Do you agree with our list? What do you think is the best accidental invention? Oh, that should have been a super sticky! For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com.